you know, there's times when I do these lists, and I look at them and I go, are you crazy, Shannon? You can't post this online. You get torn to pieces. I did, on July 4th, the video where I discussed my favorite American players. It was suggested to me then that I do it for other countries. I, I don't know that I have a lot of favorite Russian players. I can certainly look. Finns, I'll have some. Sometimes it'll be for the way they play, and sometimes it'll be because their name was just too cool. Czechs, probably a couple. But Swedes. There's an affinity for Swedes that exists because... Canucks have had a lot of Swedes over the years. I don't take offense just to the things said about the Sedin twins. A lot of them. A lot of Swedes that have played in Vancouver that a lot of things have been said about. The thing with Swedish-born players is, while there are some of them who are really gritty and really tough, the majority of them have been skilled players. Great passers. Great puck handlers. Sometimes great skaters. But of all of the nationalities in the NHL, they've always been one of those nationalities I have the most fondness for in terms of their players. So coming up with a list of 20 favorite Swedish players wasn't that difficult. Ranking them was. Because I'm, I'm basically ranking my kids. For lack of a better phrase. Um, during the last World Championship, when the Swedes won it, and I didn't like the, the shootout, there was a lot of comments posted about, you're just mad that you lost. Well, no, if Canada's going to finish second, I'd prefer they finish second to the Swedes over anybody else. Because my favorite teams, um, especially... Dallas and Vancouver have a long history with Swedish players. So does Calgary. There's a lot of teams, uh, the Rangers, uh, the original Jets. Swedes, nothing new. In fact, the original Jets were the first team that said, hey, let's bring these Europeans over and see if they can play, where NHL teams were saying, we don't care. So... It, for the sake of the World Hockey Association Jets, let's do this top 20. Number 20. Is Patrick, Patrick Sundstrom. He played for the Canucks. He was traded to New Jersey and, and part as part of the deal for uh, Kirk McLean. And Greg Adams came over around that same time. So, Sundstrom was a sacrifice to make the Canucks better. Damn good player for the Canucks during a, a time when um, this team out of Edmonton was making all the headlines. Number 19, and this is going to surprise people. Peter Forsberg spent a lot of time playing in Colorado and Philly. I didn't like Colorado or Philly. That's as high up as I could put him on the list. And Philip Forsberg isn't on the list yet. He's, he's just not there. So you can look for him, but he's just not there. Anders Hedberg. One of that original wave of Swedish players that came over. Um, he's only 18 on my list because I only caught the last couple seasons he was active. I didn't see any of his play before that. Um, good player. Uh, showed Helped to show the NHL that Swedish players could play. Decent stats. But again, and, and I've mentioned this recently, it's, it's a shame some of these guys played so much time in the World Hockey Association and that those stats are not recognized by the NHL. 17 
Washington's Bent Gustafson. Not his kid. His kid was drafted by Washington in the first round about a decade ago now. Never played a game. But Bent Gustafson was a good player. Um, and again, this is going to be a list of talent, speed, and skill. Or at the very least, talent and skill. There's a couple of them that their skating was suspect. So, toughness is going to be at a premium for this list. Sixteen's Louis Erickson. Um, Erickson would have been higher if not for this past season in Vancouver. But I can't penalize him off the list. But he's lower than he would have been. Um, he does usually follow down years with good years. So I'd be very surprised if he doesn't bounce back for Vancouver. But I still, I still state that it's not a good mix for him in Vancouver. So he's at 16. Fifteen, I have Thomas Steen, Winnipeg Jet. Um, his kid Alex is pretty good. Um, really, uh, have no problem with Alex, but he's not on this list. Uh, Thomas is. For his years of yeoman service, I was asked about my all Arizona slash Winnipeg team. Why wasn't Thomas Steen on the list? Well, because Dale Howarchuk was on the list. Um, but Steen was a close second in terms of my all-time favorite centers who've played for the Winnipeg slash Arizona franchise. And I haven't forgot that series either. It's just been crazy the last couple weeks. Number 14 and rocketing up the charts is Victor Hedman. For a small sample size, it's impressive that Hedman's that high up. Because remember, this is my all-time favorite list. And Hedman already, for me, based on this past season and the fantastic second half he had. I know there's Ottawa fans that are just clamoring for more Carlson, 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 and that he'll finally get his his uh, his due. And that there's there's a lot of Ottawa fans that weren't happy that Burns got that Norris Trophy. I could see Hedman stealing it this year. I could see Hedman. I could see Hedman getting ninety points. If if Tampa gets their game together, I could see Hedman getting as many points as as anybody in the league, minus McDavid or Crosby. I'd say Malkin, but Malkin's normally either hurt or his points per game aren't a lot higher than where I'm projecting Hedman to be. Number thirteen. Career cut short. Matthias Olin. Um, by the time he went to Tampa, he was damaged goods. And Vancouver fans knew it. And Tampa fans found it out pretty quick. Um, Olin, fantastic defenseman for Vancouver. One of my biggest problems with any Vancouver defenseman. Point man, anyways, has been they don't shoot the puck enough. If I get into Finland, you're going to see Yerke Lume, and I'm going to complain he didn't shoot the puck enough. Same with Oland. When you see a point man passing it when he should shoot, it's it's frustrating. Number 12. Ulf Dahlen. I mention him a lot. His kid is now property of the Vancouver Canucks. Looked good in the prospect game last night. Alf Dahlin. You can be hearing a lot about Jonathan Dolan. He could end up being on this list at some point. Number 11. He'd be a lot higher. A lot higher if I was older and I'd seen more of his career. But I saw enough to put Borye Salming at 11. Um, but Salming was, was a very talented defenseman at a time when there were a lot of them. But his time was before Coffee. So he wasn't influenced by anybody else other than maybe Bobby Orr. Salming was really one of a kind at that point in time. 
and you don't have Nick Lidstrom without Borea solving. I'll go. I'd go that far. I believe. I believe Nick Lidstrom used to talk about solving as being his uh, his hero, but I'm 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 blanking. I know I had a hockey card that had Lidstrom hero, and I think it was solving, but I may be wrong. Number ten. I'm gonna take Flack on both sides for this one. I am putting two people as one entry. The Sedin twins are not my favorite players, but I defend them because I've watched their entire careers and the expectation is that for some reason they're going to have grit that other players on this list aren't expected to have. And I'm, I'm not sure if that's because they play for Vancouver. I know that makes them an easy target. But um, after what was a slow start, the first three to four years in their career were slow. Um, their game really took off in the early 2010s. Late 2000s, early 2010s. So for me, they're top 10. So from Canuck fans, I'm sure it's going to be, wait, they're not number one? No. From non-Canuck fans, why are they on the list at all? You can't please anybody sometimes. Uh, number nine. Staying with the Vancouver theme. For me, Marcus Nasland is defined by the moment that he stood with a microphone at center ice and said we choked. And some people laughed that off. I thought it was really gutsy. I thought it was really gutsy to stand in front of season ticket holders and say, hey, so uh, we choked last year. And that was after the 3-1 series lead that they blew against the Wild. They did choke. It was a massive choke job. And Nasland was the guy who was the face of the franchise, and he took the brunt of it even though there was a bunch of guys in that locker room that were just as bad in those three straight losses to the Wild. Number eight, Nicholas Backstrom of the Washington Capitals. A couple Capitals on the list. Washington has its affinity for Swedes as well, uh, European players in general. Backstrom's one of the best passers I've ever seen. Um, I would be interested to see him go to another team and and see what he would do with a sniper from another team and see if, if he has an Adam Oates effect. Oates made Hall better. Oates made Neely better. Oates made everybody better when he was on their line. I'd be interested to see if Backstrom can do the same thing. I think he can. Not on the same level, because there was a lot more scoring when Oates was doing it. Number seven. Victor Arvidsson. Nashville. I love Arvidsson. I do. Um, there's just something in his game that he's become one of my favorite players in the league right now. And that's why he's ahead of guys like Nazel and the Sedin Twins, Ulf Dahlen, Oland, Hedman. Guys that I talk about regularly or guys that I speak fondly of, he's ahead of them already. It was hard for me not to push him higher. And then I'm, I get accused of not liking this guy, which is crazy. But for me at number six, that's Henrik Lundqvist. Um, Lundqvist is a, a money goaltender for the New York Rangers. Um, I think he's the only goaltender on the list from Sweden. Yeah, he's the only goaltender on the list. Um, but for me with favorite players, the majority of them have been forwards and defensemen from Sweden. So one goaltender shouldn't really surprise anybody. Um, number five, another one that I always thought was kind of, I don't know, underrated during his time, uh, Daniel Alfredson, number five, uh, if he had played his whole career in Detroit, he would have had a bunch of cup rings, but he played 
a majority of his career, everything except one season in Ottawa. You don't get cup rings playing for the Senators. He was a big part of what led them to respectability, coming out of the, the dark beginnings. And uh, Alfredson just broke ties with the Ottawa organization. There's a lot of confusion about that, but he's still number five on my list, regardless of what happens from here on. Number four, Thomas Gradine, Vancouver Canucks. I grew up in the 80s. He was the Canucks' number one center. He was underrated. By the time he was traded to Boston, he was pretty much done. Underrated, though. Number three, Matt Sundin gets number three on the list for me because of his leadership. Tremendous leader. Um, humble. Uh, when he was offered two years, $20 million by the Canucks, he went to them and said, you're crazy. I'll take one year at a reduced amount. Don't give me $20 million for two years. Don't do that. So while Mike Gillis was insane, Sundin was the voice of reason, and he was the one being offered all the money. Most most of us, me included, I just, okay, thanks for the $20 million. I don't know what I'm going to do, but thanks. You're not smart, but I'll take all your money. No problem. I was going to put Lindstrom. Lindstrom. Uh, Nicholas Lindstrom. Detroit. I hated Detroit. I hated those Red Wings teams. Which means that Lindstrom being number two on the list shows just how much I, I like Lindstrom, even though I forgot the C in here. Um, it's it's there now. It's Nicholas. It's, it's, it's either way, because um, they don't always have the C in there. Uh, Nicholas Lidstrom, the best all-around defenseman I've seen, next to Ray Bork, and and that's that's my opinion. Ray Bork's number one for me. Lidstrom would be number two. Um, Lidstrom's just fantastic. Um, I did respect him holding up a Stanley Cup as captain. I thought that was important. I always thought that the amount of flack he got when he was captain, a lot of it coming from Hockey Night in Canada crew and whatnot, but the idea that a European captain couldn't win a Stanley Cup to me was just weird. That was just baffling to me. So I'm glad he, he proved that wrong. And number one, and this is based entirely, not on his regular season, but on his playoffs. Eric, one foot Carlson. Uh, complete and total warrior, fantastic player, and um, leader. He has no problem yelling at his teammates. He has no problem yelling at refs. He has no problem yelling at everybody. Yelling at the coach if he doesn't agree with the way things are going. Um, I, the talk there's there was talk on one video about ta doing a uh, one on on which good players have been bad coaches and which bad players have been good coaches. I think Carlson someday is going to be a very good coach. He's going to be a communicator, that's for sure. All right, there's my top 20. Let me know why I'm wrong in the, the list below or in the comment section below. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. And I'll talk to you guys again soon.